and welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to bring you a very late ooh, July wrap up. Alright, so without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into this. Like I said, it is late and I've been a little busy <laughs> around the summer so you know, small baby steps, but we're getting around to it. So, we gonna jump into this wrap up. Like we ain't late or nothing. Uh, why am I funny? Even though I'm not. But I am a little bit. So, we're gonna go with it. I forgot about it, so hold on. Okay. I knew there was one I was missing. Two. I'm missing two. Oh my goodness. I do not have it together. But do any of us? Any of us mean me? Not so much, but try. I very do tr very well try. Alright, trying to decide which book I want to talk about first, and I think I will talk about Queen of Hearts by Colin Oaks. Now this one, I listened to it on audiobook, and the voice that narrated it, the girl, of the queen, the queen of hearts anyway, she really annoyed me so much. I'm going to look at my ratings for this one, because I don't think I gave it that much stars. Yeah, I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. That shows you how much I really liked this book. Huh. Nope. <laughs> and it stood up. That's so cool. But I meant to throw it, because, like I said... In the beginning, the princess was super whiny. I'm just trying to read my review that I wrote. In the beginning, the princess in this one was super whiny at times until towards the end. Her father was a cruel prince slash bastard. Hated him. And in some of the scenes in the middle where they do cut off people's heads, I don't think that should considered being YA. Especially if you're going to be cutting off people's heads. Like, that's scary for kids 14 and under who's going to possibly be reading Queen of Hearts. So, definitely watch out for that if you're going to pick that book up. And if you do, I would not suggest the audiobook for that because it. <coughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on from that. Please. The next one I'm going to talk about, I don't actually have a physical copy of it anymore because I gave it away. I read it. I don't think I'll read it again. And that is Salt to Sea by Ruta. I'm not going to even try to say that last name to focus. This book. It was okay. We were following a lot of different perspectives. It's told in World War II. And... It was about these different kids. Like I said, there was one kid. I cannot remember his name for the life of me. Oh, Alfred, I think. Yeah, I think it was Alfred. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. But he annoyed me so much. Like, anytime his scene would come on, I'm like, nope, bye. Don't want to hear about you. <laughs> then there was a guy named Florian. I did like him. And then there was Joanna, but they said her name kind of weird and different, which is like, okay, that's new. We like that. And then there was another girl who was really young and she was pregnant, but she didn't really tell anybody that she was pregnant. She really couldn't speak any other language but her own. So, I mean, I liked that part of the book. But other than those particular things, I didn't really care for, and I only ended up... I gave it a four star 
but like I said, I was only going to read it once, and I did not want to read it again, so there was that. Alright, so the next book that I ended up giving a three star, and I'm definitely keeping it, I don't want to give it away just yet, I might reread it again sometime down the line, but that is Fire and Flood by George or... George or... George R. R. Martin. Every time I try to say his name, it comes out George R. So forgive me. But this is set 300 years before Game of Thrones, and it's all about the history you need to know on Targaryens. And of course, dragons. There is a little bit of dragons. There's not as much as I hoped there was going to be. But there are some neat illustrations throughout this, which is definitely incredible if I can get this page to show and like look at that artwork oh, it's so gorgeous Mwah. but anyway I did like that and learning the Targaryens actually have the throne before the Lannisters ever set foot on it now I'm patiently waiting for the second book see if that creeps into like the times for when Daenerys and all the others are born and see before, you know, the time of Game of Thrones comes into. So, this one I definitely read on audiobook, which I'm glad I did it that way because I think I might have lost a little bit of interest into it. But with the audio, I really enjoyed it and liked it, so I do recommend that. Alright, the next book we are definitely going to be talking about that I also listened to the audiobook for is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I did give this a 5 out of 5 stars. I'm late to the bandwagon on these, of course, as usual. But I really do love Jude. Excuse me. And then, of course, The Cruel Prince. Oh, what is his name? Carden. Thank you. I don't know why I couldn't think of his name, even though I just read it last month. But it is really good. Jude and her twin sister have a older sister, but her they get taken away into the land of fairies. And they're just cruel to the twin sisters because they're not part of Faye, but their older sister definitely is. And she doesn't want any part of that. She's not a fan of her dad because he did come and kill her parents, including her mom that gave her birth. And then her foster dad, well, her foster slash stepdad anyway, but it was the Judes and her sister's parents. Anyway, it's uh, it was a mess in the beginning just a little bit, but the world building and like the magic and how they discover, how Jude discovers things and how her and Cardian at the end had to like work together and he has a tail. Take that in if you will. But I can't wait to get to the Wicked King sometime soon and then Queen of Nothing just like I need more of this world and I need some bookmarks of the cruel prince because it's come to that and that's good if it comes to that <laughs> all right moving on the next book I have that I was also listened to on audio which is King's Bane and I gave it four out of five stars this is the second book to Furyborn by Claire Legrand, and it's definitely told by two different queens, one in the beginning and then one in the present time, one is in the past time, which I didn't explain very well, and then, like I said, one is in the present time, which is her daughter, and she tries to go back and meet her mom in the middle of the book, and it doesn't go well as planned, huh, <laughs> oops, but... There is the one angel that nobody really likes, but these two queens, the Sun Queen and the Blood Queen, they don't know which title is which, if one is the Blood Queen and if, one is, and if the other is the Sun Queen, 
but I think the daughter might be the sun queen and then her mother might be the blood queen. I don't know if I'm right in that sense or not. Hopefully not, but I do love them and then like the ending on this one shook me just a smidge because why do you have to why does Simon have to go? It did what he did. The third book, which I need, which is coming, I don't know when, but I know the author is working on it currently, and it's exciting, and I need it in my hands, because I need to know why Simon did what Simon had done. I'm not going to say what he did until you read the book, and then we can discuss. So we are moving on from furry, from... King's Bane. I was about to call it Furyborn. Not the right book. <laughs> right series? Just wrong name. Alright, the next one I'm going to talk about, I ended up getting rid of the book, but I have the movie, so we're going to do with the movie of it. I did read Warm Bodies, and I honestly can say don't come at me in the comments. I liked the movie better than I liked the book. Don't come at me. But, in the book, Juliet is completely different, and so is R. I mean, it's still the same concept, but they're definitely going to be different because it is the book instead of the movie. <sighs> like, I'm trying to remember like what parts I didn't like in the book compared to the movie but I'm like drawing a blank and that is bad like I said just I didn't like it and I didn't really love it not enough to continue because there are two more books in the series and like I said I did get rid of the book but I will keep and treasure the movie forever the one thing that I did like in the book was for when R had eaten her ex-boyfriend brain, like he gave him a little bit more than it did in the movie, so there was that part that I liked in the book, but that was the only thing that I liked in the book. The only thing. So there's more bodies for you. Alright, the next book we're going to talk about is One Dark Throne. The next book we are going to be talking about is One Dark Throne by Kendara Blake. This is the sequel to Three Dark Crowns. I am in love with this series. My favorite two sisters still are... Queen Marabella and Queen Arsenoi because they are the best. Queen Katarine. Uh, <laughs> we don't like her so far. In the first two books, she is definitely very whiny. She, she can handle some things on her own, but she has to be wrapped around a boy. Like, I can't, I just, I can't. Like, I can, but I can't. The other two sisters are more about, like, into their friends and, like, what to do for, like, the kingdom and everything. She doesn't want that. She wants the crown. She wants it now. She wants to rule, but that is all Queen Katarina wants. And I don't want her to win. As simple as that. I just don't want her to win. I would take Queen Marabella, who can, like, control the weather and can do, like, lightning. Like, that's cool. And then, like I said, there's Queen Arsenoi, who is the poisoner, who can, like, eat food and, like, not die. Like, I would like that, too. And she also cares about her friends and the boy who's supposed to fall in love with either one of her sisters, whoever decides to win. And she likes him, and he likes her, and not, his, not her other two sisters, except for maybe Marabella, which, yes, you can definitely like Marabella, even though she likes Joseph, and they had a one-night stand kind of thing. <laughs> 
Oops, sorry, Jules. <laughs> he kind of went and cheated on you just a little bit. But that was all in the first book, so... Uh, that was definitely um thing. Alright, and then the next book we're going to be talking about is The Mermaid's Voice Returns, and this one by Amanda Lovelace. This is her last and final poetry collection. Now, this does have a lot of trigger warnings, which is definitely listed in the front of the book, which is child abuse, gun violence, intimacy, partner abuse, sexual assault, eating disorder, self-harm, suicide, alcohol, trauma, death, violence, fire, and possibly more. So if you want to read into this, make sure you look into those before you pick it up. But it was, I can read these short books in like a day because it is told in reverse, like I said, poetry. I really enjoyed it. I might end up reading it again soon just because <laughs> The Little Mermaid and that's Tales. I mean, it's not really like spooky or anything, but there are some of the poems that I did really enjoy and that I liked. So, I'm sorry this review for this one isn't very spectacular like the other ones should be, but if you're into this, and if you read The Princess Saves Herself in this one, definitely check out her last one. Just because, if you want. <laughs> Alright. That one's going to fall. That's cool. Not really, I'm being sarcastic. The next one I'm going to talk about, which I gave a 5 out of 5 stars to, which is Caraval by Stephanie Garber. I finally got around to it listen to it on audio and the twists and turns there's a teardrop on my book okay <laughs> anyway for this one like I was trying to say there's twists and turns you don't know what to expect you don't know who you can trust and who you can't because you're playing a game and you don't want to give the information away too soon because it could be used against you kind of thing and there's definitely some magic involved in this and there's a love interest involved in this as well and the father to the girls in this book he's definitely one of those cruel keens you know he's not really a keen but he might as well as be because he's evil like one oh anyway Scarlet was definitely one of my favorite. She definitely wanted to go and see the circus she had been writing to this guy the entire time, but she doesn't end up meeting him in person. But he ends up giving her a ticket so she can go to this circus with her sister because she is getting married soon and she's like kind of grown out of the interest of the circus. But she ends up going and she enjoys it a little bit and there's some like rocky paths some twists and turns and bumps that Miss Scarlet runs into but over and all like I said I really enjoyed this book I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars and I can't wait to continue it with the legendary and then the last book but remember it's only a game. Is it though? Is it really? Anyway, sorry I got interrupted there at the very end. But that was my July's wrap up. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscription button. You know, right down there or over there in the corner. Because you don't want to miss further videos from me. And... Yeah, I will see you guys in my next one. Okay, okay, bye.